because I've been talking with my mother a lot during this time. So yeah. uh, how is your mother, your relationship with your mother, or if not your mother, uh, a grandparent, uh, an aunt, any, like, I don't know if uh, whatever, any living relative or close relation to you? Well, it's a, it is an interesting question for the time period. My, my grandfather actually passed yesterday. Oh, wow. Um, so it is, it is good. It's apropos. And it's, and, uh, and it's a question I, I would love to answer and, uh, and appreciate because he was, he was a great uh, man. This is, was weird. He was such a great dude that I, I started trying to interview him uh, the last day, sort of when we kind of realized he was on the, he was towards the end. And he, when he had decided that he was uh, happy to be just through with it. I, I think, um, I think this is a good time period for a lot of people with quarantine and everything going on for people that are of poor health and, and, uh, and, and that are elder that I think people are just deciding that it's time to go. And I think that that's, there's, I've always believed that you can kind of have some say in when you go from like an emotional and a spiritual and, and soul level. And I think he did that during this, but what was great about him was even in the like weirdest, littlest, tiniest, um, moments of the interviews that we would have anytime there would be anything that was like a conflict or anything that like didn't maybe go his way. He handled it with such like a gentlemanly fashion. And I, and I didn't, I don't think I had noticed prior to that moment um, how balanced and like beautiful my grandfather was. He would, he even like, he had a story where him and uh, my grandmother were working together. He had an office. She was, uh, she was, uh, doing secretary work elsewhere. So she decided to be secretary work at the office. And the way he told the story was, uh, well, we came to the conclusion that we were uh, not capable of working together. So we had decided that either she had to quit or I had to fire her. That was the most uh, like, like uh, what's the word I want? Like, uh, negative he was about the entire thing he wasn't like well this per she was terrible and she couldn't do this and i couldn't do there's just literally it was just we had come to the decision that uh we could not work together and that either she had to quit or i had to fire her and it was just it was beautiful to see how how balanced he was about his own life even in retelling it in good times and bad um he's a veteran of world war ii so shout out to the veterans uh it's a powerful and interesting week in my life uh, and I did get to go see him. I quarantined specifically, got to go see him before he passed. And that was, that was pretty powerful. So thank you for having that question, even though I, 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 uh, I shoehorned that a little bit, but that's. Oh, no, my, my <laughs> sounds like your grandfather was uh, as thoughtful as my girlfriend talking about fish. <laughs> uh, also, my, my grandmother passed away at 91 in March, like just Sorry. as the pandemic was beginning. And uh, so I've actually written a lot of jokes about it, but also the thing that you said like really rings true in the way that I talk about it is that she was in a hospital, like she didn't have COVID, but uh, we couldn't go see her because right. we couldn't go into the hospital. And, but when, when she was out, it seemed like for the last maybe even year or at least many months that she was kind of hanging on. Like it's sort of the way that I think of it is like the way, you know, you can control your bladder up to a point. Like at a certain point, you're like, oh, I, I could pee now or I could wait, I could hold it. And I think that it's like a spiritual bladder. Like at a certain point, you're like, oh, I could go, but I, I'll hold it for a little while. Right. Keep being right. there with my family. But like sincerely, uh, at, uh, at the end, she's in the hospital alone. Like, you know, we've, I called her the night before. Uh, my mom had seen her a few, like a week before. And, uh, and so ultimately she was like, okay, you know, this is, I'm, I'm gonna let go now. Uh, but up until that point, it was, uh, I apologize for this mind over bladder. We're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. I do think, I do think comedy's in place for dealing with things like death. I really do. It was interesting when I lost my, uh, my prior grandfather, I was asked to do a speech at the thing. And since we have this thing, we would comedy, we have this ability to be funny on stage all the time. I had a joke in my act about my grandfather, about Alzheimer's and those sorts. Of, I won't do the joke for you now. It's not the time or the place. I noticed that everybody else that gave a speech at the funeral, uh, we tried to be funny and was wanted to be funny and wrote funny and they were not comedians. And I had the opposite instinct because we have this catharsis to be able to be funny and deal with pain on our own. I didn't feel that the funeral was a place for me to be funny, but I thought it was fantastic and great. And I appreciate being a comedian in the fact that every other person wanted to use humor at that tragic time. And I think that's, that's a little bit about, uh, who we are as comedians and, and, and being able to, like you said, you've been writing jokes about death and about your grandma. And I think there's something 
really human about that and the reason why comedy exists. Is Grandma was working in the office part time with me, and uh, we weren't working out too good. Well, we came to the conclusion that uh, uh, she was going to have to resign or I was going to have to fire her. So I don't know which it was that happened, but that was what happened.